<clears throat> so we'll be starting now. Starting. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Kusum Dikshit. Welcome you all on behalf of CI Local Venture LLP. Our agenda for today is COVID-19, a challenge to survive, being fittest and agile is the key. We will discuss infrastructure management challenges and risk post COVID-19. We are CI Local Venture LLP. We believe in real, valuable and sustainable solutions. We provide global management consulting and financial from infra advisory. We indulge in business transformation, restructuring, diversification, cost optimization, and risk profiling. Along with this, we take up PNC, TEV, LE, LI roles also. We have uploaded our corporate presentation for, for all of you, so you can go through that for more details. In our last webinar, we have discussed after a period of struggle, we always come out stronger. We acknowledged the fact that it's difficult to adopt technologies everywhere in infrastructure. Being highly populated country, we have to see employment generation also in our industry. We employ a large chunk of manual labor. Our government is trying its level best to help, help out every sector they have come up with various packages to reduce the burden and stress on industries and people. As the government cannot help each and every one, we have to help ourselves. So now people are going under depression and uh, they are due to job losses, having no money, future, anxiety, hunger, etc. Recently, we have seen there are so many suicides people are committing, which is highly depressing fact. We talked about making warriors out of entrepreneurs during COVID-19, as they are strong enough, can take up bigger risks, can face challenges better, can motivate others to be positive. But a normal person who is trying and, and struggling every day, it's important to keep in mind being fittest and agile is the key to survive. We know it's difficult, that's why we have gathered here to discuss few mantras to survive in best possible way from our industry experts on, on our panel today, who are contributing in their own special way to help people. Let's welcome all our panelists. Welcome you all on our webinar today. Let's welcome Mr. Sanjay. Mr. Sanjay, MD, CEO, Tata Reality Infrastructure and Tata Housing Development Company Limited. Then we have Mr. Nagaprasad Tamala, Chairman, People Combined Initiatives. We have Mr. Arun. We have Mr. Nagaprasad and we have Mr. Arun also with us. Mr. Alok Sisapre will be moderating this session today, who is himself an uh, uh, infrastructure industry pro, having 30 years of experience and uh, now having his own consulting. So I'll uh, request Mr. Sapre to take this session forward from here. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Hello. Yeah. Uh, are you able to hear us? Yes. Yeah. Good. Uh, so uh, everything starts with a good note and sometimes maybe with a pause. So today uh, we are starting with one of our uh, keynote uh, speaker, Mr. Sanjay, is not able to join because his dad uh, suddenly has uh, gone in in the morning. So he has probably to rush to Delhi. So he did spoke to me yesterday in the night about at length about you know. The similar way like we spoke about how do we take this webinar forward, what should be discussion points and all. But uh, today, the just before one o'clock, he called me that there is an emergency and I may not be able to log in. And uh, but he did convey the best wishes and he also said that uh, you know uh, he has tried 
through the various forums where he's part of in real estate like Nardepo and uh, other as well as in various startup forums and then government interaction forums where he is part of uh, dignitaries so he should uh, take the agenda of industry from real estate and uh, infrastructure both because he's of Tata Realty uh, and infrastructure limited so represent both the portfolio so he has taken uh, he has informed that these messages have been taken and he had uh, recent meetings with finance minister and other ministers for various issues pertaining to industry so I would say that uh, you know we have a warrior who is taking it forward, but today is not with us so because of his personal reasons. So maybe we are starting with that. And uh, Sanjay, I wish uh, your dad all the best recovery from all of us. And uh, maybe uh, next time we will be taking you again on the discussion point. Amit uh, has just joined, uh, so Manya and Kusum, you can just uh, make him uh, comfortable uh, in terms of audio and video. Meanwhile. You know, typically when we talk about infrastructure and then this panel like shows diversity, we were talking to Vitu and uh, Mr. Naga Prasad before starting off for the thing. You know, the initial reaction when I talked to them about this panel, they said, why we? So, <laughs> so I think it's a very common, common area, you know, uh, because I think sometimes even we like Arun, uh, we think why we in the industry because <laughs> we try something to change and then things don't move because the industry size is very huge and uh, Maybe the demand and requirement uh, between supply demand gap between you know quality and quantity I think is yet to be balanced in India. I thought maybe how do we start this webinar? Last time we talked to a few of the business owners in terms of making warriors out of the entrepreneur. So this time maybe we thought uh, let me first come out with some basic definitions and uh, so I just googled it typically like what all we do. So infrastructure basically is what. It is basically a basic system and services necessary for a country or an organization like building and roads and all these very basic definition including oil gas energy what name anything is infrastructure and in india large infrastructure is controlled by government and uh, also private sector is now playing an active role but then normally typically private sector has remained as a contractor or epc or whichever form of contracting is there but now there is a element of development is increased at the same time a uh, lot of discussions are happening on the tv if you see you know people feel like gdp will be how much and you know uh, somebody rates us poor and moody's re reporting comes a depression happens to the you know sensex so all these things but then uh, sometimes i feel bad like suppose we have a patient uh, at uh, our home then first thing we pray is not that he should run but then we want him to revive so another thing what i thought is you know what could be definition of revival in real terms so i think it says to bring or to be brought back to life the consciousness or strength resuscitate to give or assume new vitality yeah <laughs> and flourish again in overall terms so i think today probably the industry has to be more on revival mode then the growth mode so when people talk about gdp i understand it's a very common term to understand which lot of people we talk in public but we only know gdp as number but then you know we really don't know the dynamics behind it when i say we means i'm talking about general public not that every one of us but then uh, revival today i think is the bigger agenda than maybe uh, i would say the growth similarly uh, infrastructure is the only one business maybe any entrepreneur to that extent uh, where the top line does matter because you know your your growth is you know literally could be seen by your revenue but i think today for the first time covid has proven again that you know whatever size of business you are in what matters is are you able to really make something out of that business are you able to generate reputation and value out of the business are you able to put people in a sense that they trust you and also what you deliver is of qualitative nature i think covid probably has brought this thought process back into the system that maybe whatever we talked earlier in the books is now really need to be implemented i'm not saying it's not being done but it is being done typically and very rough word is scantily maybe it needs a popular you know reuse of uh, these things we have public companies we have private companies so we always think that private is private owner driven but 
I don't know whether I'm sounding skeptical, but our public is also equally owner driven and, you know, like typically in Hindi, we say Hathi ke daat dikhane ke aur khane ke aur. So our industries have to change this perception when the public has to be really become more transparent, more open, more visible and really following things, not for record or, you know, statutes, but also for real sense, bringing in the public value, the governance, the corporate governance, typically what we call it, uh, we call it and which I'm sure we all are trying to implement in our own organizations. And uh, me too is trying to do that with other companies in terms of being a board member on various times group companies. Naga Prasad is a thought leader in education system and then the, he has you know, started a business. Last year, he reduced his burden of running the business. So now he's thinking of where to invest that money. So one of the reasons, Naga, you're here on the panel just to think where you can invest. <laughs> so, and Arun, Arun, Arun has, uh, been on the long innings and then you know maybe second inning of his the thing is where he has reduced the burden of actively do, doing day-to-day -day business but then at the same time he is a board member on few of the infrastructure companies and uh, which uh, i don't think i should hide that and he has suddenly started following his hobbies of uh, you know photography was earlier now music so uh, i i don't i'm enjoying that innings of yours <laughs> And uh, Amit uh, uh, probably will come and talk more about the business risk, although he's from insurance background, which also he will touch a base, but then he will talk about more about businesses, the various models and uh, you know, what are the risks. So we have diversity and Sanjay would have added a lot of flavor in terms of you know, his insights of industry, which I shared in advance earlier. Probably sometimes when I feel in industry, what is happening in infrastructure, that's why I wanted a diverse panel and diverse view to be shared with our industry that there is a time where we have to see the changes in realistic term. We should attempt something which we have never tried earlier. Before going to that, maybe we can go through some rough, uh, quick stats, maybe uh, what we have. Manya, maybe you can share the screen now. And, uh, you know, these are the areas where I would say a huge work is available, but competition, today's world after COVID is one area where we should go more for collaboration, than pure competition. It has to be quantitative, less, but qualitative more uh, requirement. Nobody knows, uh, you know, we don't talk much about the impact of COVID, but nobody knows about the future beyond COVID. I will just try and show my screen. Yeah. Are you able to see my screen? Yep. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Able to see yes. So I will just quickly go through, it's already there on the folder, uh, available to you all to read and even download also. So, you know, infrastructure, typically the planning earlier to COVID was like 1.4 $1 trillion US dollar uh, investments on that and India wanted to be a 5 trillion economy. Yes, the dream has to be there and maybe a few years here and there, but the dream will be successful. I think 15% of contribution to GDP uh, is highly likely because the rate is around 9% today. 9 to 10 percent the budget has been very pro infra before covid but then we say pro infra it is a lot of projects declaration i think the industry has to put the habit of finishing the projects also which is another area where uh, cash flows will be uh, we will discuss during the discussion more for further but then cash flows will become more handy once projects are getting executed a lot of our problems are because stuck projects this is a broad breakup of data on the infrastructure. How many projects are there at the end of December 19? Already there. So if you just make a rough uh, total, around 9,000 odd, 10,000 odd projects are there ongoing on various sectors, which is a huge, huge uh, development aspect from India. And there are more in the pipeline from uh, like railways and uh, National Highway Authority of India. Some airport developments probably will be shelled off now, but they will still happen. The manpower, what we are seeing here is only a part of manpower, which is not full manpower, but then this pertains to particular real estate sector, which is around 2%. If you take infrastructure in allied industry, including government, goes around five and a half to 6% of only the, uh, you can say, labor portion of the manpower component. There are various areas where uh, public and private companies are participating and public sector uh, in fact is putting in a lot of investments by themselves and it has also uh, last 2008 onwards private sector has brought in a lot of money and in fact the stress in the industry has come partly because of the bot highways power plant has become a ppp board 
and even some metro projects where you know our uh, some of the investors and the owners were okay maybe geared up like tata is one of them but not all of them and then what has happened the subcontractors who used to be five ten years back in 2008 have become developers so they are always thought that this is going to be a new business model but they never realized the amount of risk they are taking that's why probably we have largest number of npas i'm not uh, reading these figures i'm just uh, showing you the gravitas of industry and size of industry various projects as we talked about on uh, various development projects are all ongoing there which we can see here there are mega projects which are more than 1000 crore there are projects between 150 to 1000 crore but there are numerous projects what we see in our uh, cities like bombay or uh, delhi or hyderabad corporation run projects are less than 100 crores which they never account normally in these data but they are the one who create pain for us like when you cross the road the cable trench is dug out, dug out there or there are some other areas works are happening lot of money has come in in india earlier also and lot of money was expected further but you know things are very buoyant as far as the data is concerned but then as far as our understanding of industry says maybe industry may not be able to draw that much of investment now uh, reason being the valuations will drastically change and now investors already is happening in few cases they are going for more realistic uh, valuation requirement modernization in industry has reached offices of indian companies have reached project offices in indian company but in work styles there are certain plants which has come in last 20 years uh, for major uh, manufacturing luck like when you do hot mix when you do concrete yes it is there but in terms of intent to put in modernization to use is still not there we do we do some so you see somewhere the drones being used we see ai being used but they are only in the area where the thing could be done but it is not yet generalized there are marginal or substantial rather not marginal substantial gap in various practices which are required to be done in indian industry for safety health and i would add also environment which is a big big uh, lagging area so leadership is one of the area which you know probably one of the agenda today when we talk about management challenges i believe that in industry is the one where the bandwidth of management needs to be discussed and uh, you know maybe delegated more the team participation is far more or less uh, risk and hazard both uh, hazard is more on the work risk is on business but both i think we need to do identification better education and training i think education uh, you know we have a lot of engineers coming out we have a lot of uh, autocad uh, typical designers also are coming out but if you see employability and productivity there is a big uh, big big gap between the people whom we recruit in industry and who you know whom we see the productivity out of them because our education practices probably are not very tuned to the to the industry requirement they are more on academic interest which is changing but not that rapidly probably this pandemic should make us to think more about uh, understanding of those evaluation of various projects programs and improvements which we talked about a bit in brief earlier also one of the major areas of intercommunication between various agencies of government like you know nhei declares a road project but the land is not available so three years after investment the project uh, has nothing to show and public thinks that there is nothing is happening so same as urban, uh, you know, like we have seen in Bombay, also a lot of projects have started, but then uh, they're only dug out. We can see, but there is no progress. So we have taken various references of uh, these reports, and uh, the idea behind this brief discussion was to maybe uh, just a just. Yeah. So this basically was the intention of discussion of these particular points where to lead you to the area that where are the gaps and how long you will only wait government to you know always come in and step in and put money and then you know our business risks they take on them i think there is a role which industry has to play that government will definitely come out and help maybe but it will be generalized help it will not be a specialized help to an industry or a company it will be generalized help what we probably can do is help ourselves more because businesses have always survived uh, i believe so in all adversities yes a few of them perished few of new uh, have coming up uh, have always come up 
but at the same time uh, i think entrepreneur basically the moment we say that entrepreneur is the one who can you know make a risk to an opportunity like last time we said making warrior out of entrepreneur so <laughs> this this is the time when we are talking about uh, you know various facets of industry various challenges of industry and uh, we are the maybe industry where image for us is more of our immediate political bosses or i will be very blunt on saying this or maybe our license or relations but then we are never much bothered about really making our organization to look like you know like lnt people can take name or maybe there are some companies like maybe hccl or fcons today tata group always you know there are few companies which people very few companies come on immediately handy so reputation or the brand what i think meetu will also talk briefly about this subject later and more about her other ideas but then are we not uh, investing money are we not a business community then why don't we think that whatever we are committing is a national brand first it's a public service requirement first our image when there is a pothole on the road it is also blemish on an engineer or an infrastructure company or engineering company when the bridge falls down somewhere it has happened recently you know i think arun was the one of the lead architect in bandra valley ceiling when he was in that company in hcc and you know today bandra valley ceiling today is a landmark but i think arun will also feel that the last span of one of the carriage way is still not done because of the constraints what was by that time government uh, whatever so thing is these are the constraints which you know put industry reputation also at stake now everybody comes and he sees bandra valley the ceiling uh, as a landmark in india but the moment they go to other side you know the connectivity to the valley and those sides are then you are in a big jam so you reach the new bridge very fast but when you cross the bridge there the contractor limit ends and the problem starts that means the last mile connectivity is a missing missing link we have in gurgaon we have seen rapid metro coming in but then connectivity of last mile means people evacuation to autos or taxis have taken long time same is with all railway stations and metro stations typically that you know you don't get last mile connectivity that easily and i think this last mile connectivity is the area of our so called famous jugad which deprives us of lot of challenges and innovations which maybe sometimes jugad is good sometimes most of time it is not always good so somewhere this is the area where probably we should go and think more about creating it another area where uh, you know we create the mess and somebody else we make responsible to sort out so as construction companies or uh, as manufacturing units we have a lot of migrant uh, workers the migrant when we say it's typically the labor when migrates from one place to other so it's not exactly international uh, migrant here but then we put them in camps so called camps i don't want to say that very critically here but then they are not the best of the facilities for any uh, human being to live for long at least and when the lockdown starts you know we take care of them for initial 5 to 7 days 10 days maybe but after that we don't attend them and then they get desperate and there are a lot of rumors around a lot of politicking happening and they are left to fend for themselves this is where people who are no way connected to industry like mr naga prasad tumala here who come forward by his own with no interest in infrastructure industry but for helping those migrant laborers which are 60% maybe must be from our industry only and they organize large fleet of their own uh, you know rent hired rented buses and they give them food and shelter temporarily and money to send them back to their respective places is it not a responsibility of also infrastructure or manufacturing or industrial units to take care of their workers so i think this this discussion will be more you know we have to think and come out of this, this is not also exercise where the brand gets impacted people feel outside that our migrant labor in india are not being treated we are not it is a human right crisis typically and mr naga will talk more about it there are areas where business models are made and changed every day and then they are very good on paper but something different on ground which i think amit will talk during the discussions so on this backdrop i think i have already taken uh, some time left by sanjay's absence maybe to utilize to talk to you about this uh, but i feel that let's 
come out together and find out something in respective directions. So maybe we can do more about, uh, you can say together, we can bring out something where people can take advantage of our wisdom and maybe we can influence the forums. So with this, I will request Mr. Naga Prasad uh, to take uh, his place and maybe enlighten us with his views. Thank you, Alok. Uh, good afternoon, dear panel members and the participants from across the globe. I'm very, very happy to address you all and share my views. I'm primarily uh, from education uh, industry for almost uh, three decades, we are into education. And I have some um, uh, familiarity with education infrastructure uh, because it is a large scale infrastructure activity. And today I share my views uh, as educator, social thinker, and of course, uh, some thoughts as an entrepreneur. So education uh, as, uh, as infrastructure is all over. Education is all, also all over. It, there is no, other, no sector can be divided of education. It is so important, uh, particularly for us to revisit uh, at, at the uh, in the thick of a COVID uh, crisis, uh, COVID actually has um, helped us uh, to check whether we are still relevant. Um, there is no relevance anymore left. If there is a need to change, what kind of change that we need to undergo? It's a, such a black swan moment uh, for all of us in whichever sector it is. So if you um, step back because um, Alok just mentioned about the skill and labor issues. See, we all know education is uh, something uh, very, very important for uh, success in career. I, I, I'm not saying that uh, all the people who have received good education are successful in career. And at the same time, I'm also not saying that um, all those who haven't received good education are failure in their career. But there is a strong correlation with good education and general success in career. And if you have looked at it, uh, Malcolm Gladwell in his book Outliers has brought it out very clearly. Students who go to rich neighborhood schools, they have a head start when compared to most others. They can use the technology better. They have exposure to latest knowledge and skills and this is uh, resulting into a kind of uh, extreme uh, differentiation they are taking the large percentage of economic wealth uh, to their gain and uh, this is creating um, a kind of uh, economic differentiation social differentiation even to an extent cultural differentiation if we just, uh, uh, as Alok mentioned, uh, migrant labor barefoot walk, we have initiated Stop the Walk um, uh, campaign and about, uh, it, it was a huge effort, but uh, we could at least uh, 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 ensure at least five, 6,000 uh, migrant labor reach their destinations uh, instead of walking to their destinations. Just to, just to intervene, so, Naga, uh, here, this uh, campaign what they la launched for uh, stop walking was one of the best advertised uh, campaign they also got the award for that yeah, yeah. so and uh, thank you Alok, for uh, that interjection uh, uh, and uh, this was all 25 30 year old youth who are from iits and uh, kind of backgrounds who got moved and we actually through our foundation raised funds and helped people uh, reach their destinations in i see government has done a lot of work uh, it is a kind of uh, that uh, small squirrel uh, kind of support act however if you look at be it um, george floyd's uh, death uh, and subsequent rights in us or these uh, migrant labor barefoot walk in india so it clearly reflects the kind of divide that the society is having 
and the fundamental question we all should have should ask ourselves can any society survive last long with kind of with this kind of divide and if you look at the root cause of it it is fundamentally the quality of education one has received and at the if we look at the present education system itself it is failing more people than actually um, taking them to required levels and on top of it uh, social scientists are now proposing universal basic income i don't see any reason why at the first place you fail people and then uh, give doors this is not going to go any far the there is merit to ensure that everybody is a success and um, uh, for that the kind of education that is to be extended to them but if you look at just india numbers to provide that kind of education india needs 2.26 trillion us dollars by 2030 who is going to give that kind of money where from the money comes if i also work with the government of india on uh, uh, trying to convince them uh, this is uh, very very important you guys need to bring out the framework um, that enables right investment to, into education infrastructure because education infrastructure is very very expensive and it is very underutilized uh, infrastructure while everybody talks uh, uh, good about uh, so you, you, if you talk to roads and uh, buildings or you talk to any other sector people come up this kind of numbers where from the money comes so and if we look at uh, government government typically has the dna of controlling it is not that they want to um, enable however my own experience with government is uh, we need to engage with them relentlessly and advocacy is the key to convince and many a times it takes decades of uh, persuasion before we uh, get the desired result during covid government of india has come up with the kind of uh, policies uh, um, uh, uh, like agricultural reforms or uh, mining reforms or uh, power sector reforms do you think that they are uh, just a flash that came up uh, just like that for decades uh, the sector uh, and industry bodies are representing and pushing the government and uh, this is that moment uh, when government decision about it so whatever the kind of enabling uh, decisions governments have to take we have to continuously engage with them and see that uh, there is a the right kind of regulation that uh, is going to help a uh, society at large so when this kind of regulatory uh, scenarios that are uh, going to be the future particularly one of that uh, uh, sectors is uh, construction uh, industry the kind of regulations uh, today the construction industry i don't know uh, what kind of regulations but covid is going to bring uh, very uh, different kind of regulations from the safety point of view but most of the small time contractors and builders they just can't adhere to that kind of norms if anyone uh, to uh, follow that kind of norms means the costs are going to increase substantially the moment when costs increase the first thing anyone uh, does is uh, they evaluate those costs with automation and technology only if it is still economically uh, feasible they go for uh, human uh, 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 work contribution otherwise they simply switch to automation the moment when the switch to automation happens two things uh, uh, that are important one is for such automation they they need a skilled workforce and also it costs more where from the skilled workforce comes everybody talks of skills skill is not something you just uh, for two three months uh, you put someone on the mission and he runs the mission that is not i think is a skill a skill is a combination of people attitude their knowledge hard work and perseverance there are so many traits these things have to start very early on if that is not there they get into the kind of jugard 
and the failure of that jogad is very very expensive be it a uh, um, safety point of view or the cost point of view it can be many such uh, uh, implications so this is uh, the time um, all the industry leaders uh, and uh, important uh, players in the industry need to uh, come together and uh, uh, work with the people the kind of uh, uh, skills they need what kind of interventions are needed from now itself so that it's not going to be a big suffering uh, it is the irony is uh, when there was no work the uh, labor was left out and they actu actually had to walk hundreds thousands of kilometers and when there is work i got to uh, i am uh, most of you also might be hearing that uh, there were even uh, private uh, flights uh, being operated to bring these migrant labor back to the workplace so it is a very short sighted approach i don't say that everybody is doing that but the point is uh, these are the kind of contrasts if i need you i, I ready i'm ready to spend any amount and uh, when i uh, you are in crisis or when i don't need you i don't even spend a penny on you this kind of approach has to change at a fundamental level otherwise uh, uh, we are not uh, seen in a good light then uh, the, i don't say these are predictions but uh, as an entrepreneur i always also look at uh, what is going to be the kind of opportunity available i i briefly welcome uh, amit roy uh, who has finally joined us on video also now <laughs> he was having uh, <laughs> welcome amit and uh, yeah uh, yeah we will continue further yes naga sorry to interrupt you no issues yeah uh, from um, the education uh, uh, kind of uh, important change i am thinking uh, and uh, hoping that going forward there is going to be blended learning a fundamental uh, change distance uh, learn online as well as there is also a possibility um, uh, there can be experience centers in the neighborhood they don't need to travel out of uh, to the school and uh, uh as a result uh, children will have best of the experience as well as the online uh, uh, rich content based learning possibilities uh while this is a little far because uh, for something like this to happen uh, government is the biggest uh, uh, education provider and the government comes up with all sorts of regulations uh, uh because they just can't uh, do all this so today in many states um they are even uh, saying uh, don't teach online why probably i think uh, government is not able to do that so people are asking why are you not doing hence they don't have answer easiest is stop the private of doing good work uh, while uh, I, I, this kind of challenges are going to be there but uh, uh, when uh, people see merit in something they definitely move in that direction similarly the work from home also what covid has brought us to everyone of our understanding that you can be productive sitting home now almost all of us are sitting home and having this webinar so for this kind of realization to come it took decades but having experienced that kind of productive work from homes the kind of possibilities i am foreseeing are uh, maybe within your gated community there will there can be the workplaces community workplaces where uh, like we have clubhouses there may be kind of uh, uh, office set up also people uh, just pay and use the uh, place and uh, similarly the, there may be neighborhood workplaces also uh, a, a possibility and reality this can bring down uh, um the travel time uh, the, the, there is no need for uh, those uh, uh, spending way too much time on the traffic jams just uh, mitu was saying bombay roads are now so free so <laughs> see when once we taste the fruit of it uh, then definitely we ask for it and uh, uh, somehow system will get push in that direction i'm uh, uh, whether i'm wishful uh, thinker or uh, i'm optimist i don't know but uh, definitely one thing is clear that uh, human ingenuity i believe in human ingenuity and when there is a problem and suffering from that 
and we see a possible solution definitely we uh, work in that direction and i'm very hopeful of um, some of these changes to take place and also I, I personally believe gig work is going to be the uh, the new norm most of the experts and uh, uh, contributors to any work uh, are instead of a full-time employee of any organization in some of the functions it was already there now it is uh, picking up much more uh, in that direction so some of these uh, are my thoughts and uh, i can uh, keep uh, sharing uh, going forward yeah. in the conversation thank you so i think it's it's a, a very good thing what you uh, brought in and also a perspective about you know various things how it could be done maybe with a better perspective planning and you know how things could be eased out for uh, i think one of the area probably you know where uh, your uh, organization uh, have done past i would like you to highlight that you know i think everywhere in india typically the employee treatment is always challenging because employee from employees perspective because employee always like you know are the second commodity for us not the priority and uh, women uh, particularly are also uh, one of the neglected area but uh, oak ridge schools as well as your people combined have been awarded repeatedly for best place to work amongst uh, safest place to work for women and uh, you know how we do one is okay the award part very commendable but then how you really manage to do that i think because one area where i think industries and infrastructure suffer is people management for us people management goes by you know typically the stick or sometimes the carrot but then there is no bridging uh, you know constantly for you know bringing the employee up train him encourage him yeah they, sometimes they need a pat on the back as well as sometimes the tough piece also but not that always they should be put on a tighter leash so how you manage i think the one of the area where you can throw some light about your management of your group the people skill um, yeah um, uh, most of you know the great place to work uh, the award organizations um, uh, in collaboration with economic times um the year last year when we were exiting we ended up with the best of our ranks uh, 15th uh, across sectors in the country uh, in competition to microsofts and googles of uh, india uh, and also uh, with um, uh, the working women uh, organization for uh, we participated in three years and all three years we were top 10 in the country so um so Why I think it, it, needs, are... it, it needs a loud uh, appreciation yeah, of this yeah. support so, because I think this is very missing part in our culture. Yeah. yeah thank you very much, Alok. Uh, uh, the, here, important thing is uh, these ranks and the recognitions are just an outcome. We never work right. for uh, these ranks or recognition. So we only participated uh, just at a later end part of it. Culturally, we were uh, very clear. Um, I always uh, tell my team uh, three principles, um, people, principles, and product. So in our uh, thinking, people comes first. So when there are, uh, we are, our DNA is people-oriented DNA, and second, we value the principles. Then whatever the business that you do we ourselves are in education we are in uh, food industry and we are also a little bit off into uh, uh, real estate development kind of businesses no matter which business are you in fundamentally how, how much you are uh, your heart uh, pains if your colleague uh, has some suffering uh, that's fundamental dna so as the moment when you you take care of your people with so much of empathy, what happens, people put their best. Not that everybody is going to be a star performer, but it is his best or her best. As a result, it gets into that kind of missionary mode. Uh, you don't need to extract work from people. You just need to guide them. While it sounds a little utopian, but we have done this for almost 27 years so i can uh, 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 tell with so much of uh, conviction that uh, um, people uh, behave very different uh, uh, if you uh, they see a genuine leader in you correct 
another area where i would like to ask you is uh, you know the investments like uh, any other industry uh, has always been a challenge uh, for indian companies maybe last few years were a bit rosy but then uh, maybe different segments do you feel that this particular uh, pandemic uh, situation is going to change again for uh, investment scenario going to be for uh, foreign investors when i say investors because the ratings are going are changing fast you know people uh, Moody's are saying something, you know, PwC is there with us, he will say something about industries. So it is changing quite regularly. So do you feel that investors' uh, confidence will change again? It was anyway, means not always consistent with Indian companies. If we are not uh, uh, looking for just, uh, what is that in uh, infra, uh, it is book card. Uh, no, no, generally I'm saying, yeah. What I'm saying is, if the business fundamentals are strong during COVID, after 15th March, Reliance has brought in yeah. 1.15 lakh crores as investment, as FDI. It is a clear FDI into the country during last two to three months. What does it indicate? Forget about Moody's ranking or XYZ ranking. People don't care as long as the business fundamentals are strong. So uh, I am uh, uh, seeing a, a huge opportunity because India is the 1.3, uh, 130 crore population uh, market. So, and world over there is a lot of money. So much of money, they are actually negative interests are there out. Uh, people, uh, even if you, your uh, rupee dollar hedging uh, happens and they get no return only at the investment level also, they will be damn happy because their money otherwise earning a negative interest. Okay. And one of the area of skill development when it's talked about quite a lot, you know, what has happened, a lot of new skill development, uh, I would say firms have came up. But then I have not seen any larger partnership with uh, you know industries like yours, with the government in terms of skill development, or even with the big large private players. Whereas it, because infrastructure or construction is one of the area uh, where probably the skill uh, is quite you know uh, I would say gaps more jada. It's very difficult to say that everybody is having 45 percent productivity level or 60 percent productivity level somebody is 35 somebody is 85 but then 35 sometimes you know keeps his job and 65 85 percent loses his job because of various things but how the skill level could be imagined is any partnership possibility between the industries so um hello um you were also mentioning about engineering colleges and uh, way too many engineers out there um but uh, they are not uh, matching to the market requirements uh, here, uh, engineering college is, is essentially a skill development institute. Yeah. So, if high level. Yeah. That, at, at that level itself, where too many people are uh, not employable, um, what does it mean? See, the in, see, you never should limit only to input. It has to be outcome based. So Correct. to get to a system base to see what kind of people you are actually taking into the skill development institute. See, it is not that you take 20 people into your training and uh, at the end of three months or six months, all of all the 20 people are going to be skilled, skilled enough. There is a fundamental attitude requirement is there. So as a result, what happens when people put way too many efforts, it's not that if there is uh, there are no attempts being made but the, the fundamental challenge is the correction has to happen when the uh, someone is a five year old or seven year old or 10 year old the correction at a, at a 25 year old or a 35 year old is much more difficult it is much more expensive right. so that's what the struggle people are not able to address and uh, today if we look at the end of schools so the government schools and the education that is being provided or even most of the private budget schools also it is very very basic so with that kind of approach if we expect skills at a later stage in life it is something like a mirage it is not easy good naga thanks thanks for your uh, 
lovely insights and opinions and uh, maybe time to move on at the same time maybe if all the panelists uh, by the way want to say something on the subject just what we talked about quick word maybe on skill or whatever he touched upon arun maybe you can uh... yeah thank you alok uh, for having me here good afternoon everybody good afternoon panelists and the participants here uh, you know since this is a discussion at the backdrop of covid let me uh, touch upon few of the events that we witnessed during last you know two three months you know maybe this started in some sometime in december but we really realized it sometime in january february and march was the month when uh, you know we had to really announce the lockdown if you recall what happened during those days i'm not talking only about india i'm not talking restricting myself just to india but you go back to china where it started or you know uh, go back to italy and other european countries or uh, some other countries uh, everybody was talking about you know the lockdown and everybody led the priority human life as a priority over economic measures and economy economic factors that is where we started mm -hmm. we also said that jaan hai to jahan hai and all that you know during mm -hmm. those and now we have witnessed the lockdown for last 3 months and uh, most of the messaging that you see in social media and other forums people are talking about immunity boosting people are talking about fitness we also saw that most of the fatalities that we have witnessed most of the people had some underlying issues underlying problem under, underlying health issues there and there we saw that more people suffered with those kind of issues now i thought that there has to be some learning from all this now today when everybody is talking about immunity and fitness now today we see that there are no hospital beds or there are no uh, you know ambulances available to take a patient who is in need to the hospital in some of the places where some of the cities like mumbai or delhi where uh, you know it is creating in uh, havoc and in large numbers what ultimately you know this particular thing has shown to us is ultimately when it crosses certain threshold it crosses certain boundary then you are left to yourself to fight now in case of you know health issues we have been talking about immunity and fitness now if we take this analogy to a business is the same pre covid era you know since i'm coming from this industry you take last year and if you see the order book position of many many construction companies or many players in the infrastructure has been satisfactory i may not say you know they were at the best people have got ambitions but they were satisfactory the issues what people had before this particular covid thing triggered was execution challenges which rose out of various cash flow issues and debt burdens or whatever it is whatever are the problems so i am calling it as a underlying condition like in covid we saw that the health people who are having health issues already suffered more similarly during last 3 4 months or next quarter also now the people who were already having certain issues would be suffering a bit more than the others but what it is, what it is telling us basically is you have to fight your own battle you have to fight it for survival as well as for the growth or whatever condition in which you are now alok you already mentioned that yes you can look upon you know government for certain health government is trying to do in case of you know uh, covid also every government in every country they are trying to do their best they 
made some projections, tried to make certain quarantine facilities. We have not, we never expected government to respond to this particular situation so well. And whatever they have done in the in India is commendable. But ultimately, ultimate message is that if for individual, ultimately he has to take care of his own health. So similarly, individual companies and individual sector will have to take its own uh, steps. And when there is a fire, only way you are, this industry knows how to fight the fire. Okay, but that's not the issue. You cannot live in firefighting mode forever. Hmm. Similarly, when we discuss COVID and when we discuss, uh, you know, the industry health and how, what do we do today? What do we do next and all that? People are expecting quick fixes. People want immediate solutions. I don't think that is going to happen that way. And why we are here, different companies in the sector are at different positions. Somebody is suffering more, somebody is suffering less. But why we are here is because of our past. What we did good, what we did not do good, what we did bad. So these are our own decisions. And because of that, we are where we are today. That is what I think we will have to accept. There cannot be further denial to that. And denial is the best mode. Denial is always the best mode. We are living very happily. So once you come out of that denial, acceptance is very bad because when you accept certain, you have to act. So today is the situation where we have to act. But today you cannot go on talking about, you know, today maybe somebody will have to fight the fire, some immediate solutions, and that, that will depend upon uh, the company in which, uh, you know, uh, situation it is, and everybody will have to find its own solutions for a temporary. But in the long run, in the long run, Unless and until your fundamentals are right, and then unless and until your foundation is strong, you cannot jump. You know, Alok was saying that, you know, today you are expected to run, but no, today you are in the hospital, you have to walk first before you run. So that is the situation today. Okay, we have to accept it. Now, today we are talking about migrant labors. Issue of migrant labors is not at all new to this industry. Now, probably this word was known to the entire world because of our media. And because, you know, uh, everybody got affected because of this. Now, whether it is festival like puja or, you know, people going back to their natives for harvesting, people have been going back to their natives and they don't come back. And this industry has been suffering always. And this particular issue of my migrant labors is probably in discussion for the last more than 10 years. And like Asho, uh, Alok was mentioning, yes, people have been trying to address it in their own ways. Now, when we are when we are saying that people go and they don't want to come back, people definitely want to come back and work here because and now this particular situation, people have gone back to their natives. They know that, you know, uh, when uh, in Mumbai the project starts, they will earn more and they will come back. But when is the issue? Now, we have been talking in the industry. One is, you know, migrant labor, but related with that, you know, how to retain the people. Now, labor retention, generally, I mean, we, are, we were talking also for the management staff, engineers as well as for the workers but today people are talking about you know migrant labor and in that context it is being seen now how do you retain that labor force because that's a big number that you need now any construction company or construction sector today let them check last 10 years records one common cause for loss of production has been shortage of labor now shortage of labor is also needs to be you know understood in different context now this particular issue when you know all over the world infrastructure industry was booming india 
with its own plans of you know uh, giving importance for infrastructure development and uh, allocating good uh, you know budgets for that similarly some other countries in, and like gulf countries were also booming at the same time now during that particular period when gulf was doing well industry here in india has suffered a lot because people simply you know left india they went to gulf for working because you know that's a big opportunity there now that is also a migration so what i'm saying is migrant labor and that particular issue what we are talking about needs to be seen in a bit little bit larger context and not probably in the context of covid or many such issues this is a backdrop yes but we have to see this as a external threat we have to look at it as a as something you know which has come come on to you which was not anticipated now that also takes you to you know area of risk management and what you perceive risk now when we talk about risk it is very easy for the people to immediately go back to you know project level identify the risk highlight and all that and then you uh, start addressing them but what happens is that when it comes to enterprise level risks generally my observation is that people are in a denial mode why people are in denial mode because there are two aspects to it one is impact and second is probability now when you are talking about project level risks there you see that probability bit higher or you can see that something is coming or something can happen or you have experienced it but probably the impact of that is not much and when when it comes to overall business perspective but enterprise level risk when you talk about the probability is less and then you are in a denial mode but the impact is very high now today you are what seeing that yeah every realization has happened every single business is suffering and there you are caught unaware because you know this is something one never expected and this has come now i will i will just intervene arun for one minute here see one one thing last time we talked about is uh, you know the business continuity plans i think uh, maybe abit can shed some light later a bit on that see hmm. reserve bank of india uh, is hmm. a typically but the kanachi sarkari system hai but then they have on their website a very elaborate business continuity plan yeah. you know in terms of such pandemic it is mentioned there you know because right. i have gone through and read they have mentioned right. it there and Correct. you know ultimately it is also the brain and people and you know uh, thinking right. process which ultimately drives this out but then yes. they are thinking the what you say the enterprise risk or a global risk to that extent yeah yeah, yeah. whereas uh, probably we as industry yeah. fell short yeah yeah one yeah. but really people talk about you know war like situation or a war okay Correct. now you have yet to establish whether this particular covid is a war whether it is man made or it is accident but it's an accident such a big scale that entire world is affected because of this is it not so correct what is your preparedness for this now if somebody says today that you can expect big cyber attacks because the definition of war itself has changed no mm. no this is no longer just a physical war correct whether you are you know accounting for such factors when you are talking about risk of course amit when he talks he will bring in more uh, ideas on that because he's from you know uh, from that sector but i'm just uh, sharing some uh, you know some of my views related with the industry now so this is this is this is this is what i i i i feel you know now what happens is now what i have seen on that particular front is see like you know we talk about epc projects right and uh, i'm i'm talking more uh, industry specific just now yeah, yeah, sorry please, for, please yeah or no, maybe no, I, it is, I don't know alok <laughs> yeah but you know we can talk about the projects you know you know that more more of risk are uh, you know assumed by the contractors epc contractor and you always say that when you draw a curve you know 
when you say that there are different phases of a project, you know, engineering phase and a procurement phase and a uh, construction phase, and then when you draw a graph of, you know, influence that you can have, you know, during these various phases, correct? So engineering phase is something which has got maximum influence. Then when you roll to the procurement phase, I mean, there are overlaps. It's, it, they are not exactly. Yeah, not exactly verticals, yeah. When you when you you know roll over to the procurement, the influence that you can you know exercise on your execution and the cost impact or benefit impact, whatever you call it, is little bit less. And when you go to the construction phase, it is the least. Right. But the amount of time that you spend on engineering phase, when I say engineering, it it you know designs of physical structures and then methods and equipment planning and project planning and method planning and all that stuff included so it's an engineering phase so if you do your engineering phase better then obviously uh, you know you have better control but in india now indian context i am i am saying that people spend less amount of time on this particular phase right and People then struggle and do fire fighting mode when it comes to construction, and then you have lots of surprises. Okay. That's what I'm. Mean. Similarly, when you you know when when it is a business, you know construction or infrastructure business or a or a construction company, I would say that there are two major activities. If you break it down into two separate activities, I will break it down into two activities, major major roles or major activities. One is, you know, business acquisition and second is, you know, business delivery or execution. Execution and delivery. Now, you will see that, you know, most of the businesses had good order backlog, I said. Order backlog, people were, you know, satisfied with. You may not be satisfied with, but, you know, I would say it was not bad for most of the people people were struggling at the execution phase, right? And the issues would be many. Now, what I'm trying to say is that when you are at the business acquisition stage, there the type of and quantum of risk that you assume are too high. Sorry. Unless and until you address your risk at that particular stage, it is very difficult for you to do a proper execution. And when you go with the magnifying glass and microscope, and then you start dissecting, you will start, you know, uh, understanding that lots of problems arose, you know, at that stage itself. Now that could be due to acceptance of terms and conditions, what you could have avoided, going into the area which you should not have gone, geographical area as well as the area of doing a business because you know people in a hurry you want to grow and a huge amount of work available from the you know government people are taking work left right center people are you know i mean that also goes well with the you know aggressive pricing now you take all this business and then you expect that i will manage it at the execution phase now that particular particular practice and thought you know needs to be relooked i would say so so these are some of the things i mean uh, these are not quick fixes but this is something which will lay your foundation better for tomorrow i mean like you said i mean there is going to be huge business in the country some other countries people are suffering because there is no business itself Correct. But here for infrastructure, this is going to be our priority. This is our priority. This is going to be priority. And if you have to, uh, you know, have better consumption in the country and do the wealth distribution, you will have to create infrastructure. That is where, you know, government will have to give priority and spend money on. And then there is a huge opportunity for the business. So, so Arun, in this context, suppose if we generally see, generally, I'm not saying specifically to any organization, 
do you feel that the management bandwidth so typically or management capabilities what are needed like you talked about perception global risk business risk enterprise risk generally in terms of in industry we see do you feel uh, that we have that geared uh, organizations if you take the entire industry spectrum okay now you know you divide it into a class b class you know now like what people have been talking and then you will definitely see that there is a lack of bandwidth in terms of understanding because you know uh, this is something you know at home when you when you are taking a decision what happens when you are any purchase decision or any any decision you take you don't uh, you know uh, say that okay this is the risk but you feel that i will manage this particular risk so you quickly you take that decision but similar practice if you adopt your business and you know what you do in for 5 crores 10 crore rupees if you apply to 1000 crores then you know and construction industry what uh, one has to un uh, understand you know the difference is that you know you are talking mo uh, more of you know civil and major uh, uh, heavy uh, infrastructure projects the span is very long you know the, so it's it's not just five months six months you know building sector typically one and a half year but uh, bigger infrastructure projects uh, you know the uh, they they are executed on a much longer period so uh, during that particular period so many things can change now you you are into central government contracts you are into state government contracts today tomorrow you have election and then you have different dynamics in place now you have seen some of the companies have gone bankrupt yeah i think for benefit of other viewers like uh, particularly like mitu and naga who are not exactly from industry you know i think this is the only industry where political government changes are directly proportional to companies growth or fall in terms of projects awarded by previous company and you know so it is reverse so this is this only happens maybe in our country to this extent so yeah. that, exactly so that is what it is and now this is what i'm trying to say okay, when you are talking about business risk and perspective now and this is the enterprise level if 500 600 crore rupees is stock or 1000 rupees is stock then it's a big amount for you yeah means if you typically see i think naga also maybe you can say or uh, amit also or you also see typically yeah. a company is a turnover if you see a good company in india other than infrastructure 200 300 crore itself is a very good turnover to begin with and then you know the company starts taking shape now here the projects in two and a half to three years to be done are about thousand crore so if you go by that standards you are earning revenue of a company literally in a project in three years so you can understand you know the company of 300 crore has so much of bandwidth for business there was so much of risk understanding and you know so much of uh, you can say uh, situation assessment but in the infrastructure project the entire thousand crore is governed by three or four people who are at different levels and rest is all work team so you know i think this itself is a magnitude to be understood that thousand crore in three years is like 100 crores per year by any standards plus minus 100 crore will go to last year maybe so you know this is a big risk which probably nobody really thinks that they are not taking a project they are making company revenue literally equal to one 300 crore size company every year Correct. so <laughs> this is a magnitude <laughs> that is a huge magnitude and then uh, there now you this also relate with uh, uh, management with that question you asked me there you feel that you will you'll be able to take a decision but uh, you know having worked with lots of uh, foreign players you know uh, joint venture you know when you are uh, when i used to negotiate uh, joint ventures uh, wanting outside people to come and work here for uh, now the risk assessment how they do it and how they look look at it is far too different and sometimes you can call it robust also much more robust you know we i mean you have adopted i mean many companies have adopted some uh, these practices i'm not saying no people in, the, in indian uh, construction companies larger players they have adopted certainly these practices now uh, so uh, so basically uh, you know business acquisition and business uh, you know execution 
we are talking about risk management at the execution level more than generally you know at a acquisition level so that's basic point what i wanted to bring about as a good and better practice now correct you know, what do you do in uh, neg i mean you have to lay your focus on that and since right. the business is going to be big very big you don't have to really rush you know and you right. don't have over aggressive now when you are saying cash flow cash flow is the king cash is the king everybody says cash is the king but it starts there no it starts right from the acquisition stage and now you talk about on top of that you know various factors now migrant labor what you have seen here this we have been facing you know construction industry faces in every state and most of the projects are now you mentioned about you know bandra valley project just now now bandra valley project lingered on for last like 10 years but out of that you take construction period was hardly 3 3 and half years correct so remaining period you are only sitting which is the cost now metro project such a big and huge important project today now certain activities could not be started because of the environmental clearances and even uh, you know uh, today you don't know whether all the clearances are in place or whether every because it was supposed to be reviewed So no, I think uh, very right. But the, what you brought out was very right. That you know the I think uh, others in the panel may also realize that you know the diversity of industry is so huge and you know uh, sometimes it is very difficult to catch up. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think what I'm trying yeah. to say there will not be quick fixes, but you will have to largely go for your fundamentals and how do you. Uh, you know have a better uh, uh, you know base and how do you change your practices now uh, most of the company that growing so fast they don't even understand that they have grown now manage a business uh, with a small size and number of you know projects in hand you know five projects 10 projects and when you quickly grow now managing the projects in one state alone when you are in a growth mode typical growth uh, for the construction companies has been in a particular state you do your that's your home ground and then that's where you start building and you don't even realize that you have become a pan india company you have taken projects from the central bodies and you are working in jnk you are working in this state that state and every particular state has got its own dynamics now for but you are grown now for you to sustain and grow further what you require is your robust systems and that is only you, you know it's going to help and more delegation you know people who can manage your business better and uh, that, that that's the future i mean and the, there are companies who are managing this business is not just in india but you know abroad as well so uh, we have all kinds of uh, companies in the country but this is for those who are in you know uh, growth mode and then uh, cross certain threshold and the issue that you basically you know mention correct correct no yeah. i think uh, very rightly put up and i think uh, maybe the people uh, who are uh, understanding this will be a message to them also that how enterprise risk or how business assessment and understanding is critical and uh, maybe what we will do arun also will take up some interaction session towards the end with everyone a bit of open yeah. forum Uh, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. Meanwhile, there is a bit of time to move ahead, uh, and uh, Meetu is noting down various points. I am watching her since long, so maybe it's now time for her to step in, and uh, in this unusual world of infrastructure, maybe share some, something which maybe you can, uh, you know, you might have understood that this is a very strange uh, industry. So maybe now you can uh, relate better. So we are looking forward to your insights. Definitely. Thank you uh, for the opportunity, Arok, and uh, once again, hi everybody. Um, while infrastructure, uh, you know, like you just mentioning that um, uh, Arun possibly is a veteran in the industry because he's been working here for so long, but I also feel that all of us are actually in our own right veterans in the infrastructure industry because we've been the users of the space, Absolutely. and uh, all of us. have like you know some observation or the other so whether it is like us going to school or our children going to school now or the roads that we use or the ports or airports that we uh, travel through 
or the healthcare system that we are currently concerned about, um, all that uh, each of us have experienced very, very closely. So each of us have observations about it, and hence uh, we believe, uh, you know, uh, th that we know and understand this industry pretty well. But of course, it's a highly complex industry, and uh, one has to be literally experiencing it from the other side of the table to understand the complexities of it. But those complexities uh, itself create a sense of, you know, certain kind of perception about the industry. Um, so being a, a reputation and reputation risk consultant, uh, I just thought that, uh, you know, let me not color my opinion uh, through the observations that I personally have, but let me do a quick research. Uh, since I had a conversation with Alok, um, I undertook a quick research uh, with people at uh, CXO level uh, across industry. So whether it is uh, ports and logistics, aviation, uh, mutual fund, banks, uh, even journalists, people of uh, my fraternity, consultants. Uh, so, you know, variety of people, in fact, politician, uh, and just try, try getting, you know, a diverse opinion about what people think of this industry. And uh, what's the kind of perception that uh, this industry um, enjoys and what kind of reputation, hence, uh, that it has. Um, one thing that clearly came out, that everybody, everybody believes that this industry is highly critical for the growth uh, of the economy. And not only Indian economy, but world over. So infrastructure is, uh, you know, the central point uh, for ensuring that the overall economy grows. However, this opinion then was labeled by terms like red tapeism, uh, bureaucracy, slow in decision making, um, too many uh, you know stakeholders, and hence uh, unclear in terms of who is the responsible, uh, you know, who should be held responsible for a certain kind of a delay, like. I stay in a uh, area which is called Pawai in Mumbai, and there is this uh, place called Sakinaka close by. Like this uh, Bombay Pali Sea Link, Tandra Pali Sea Link, this place called Sakinaka for the last 20 years is perpetually in traffic jam. Right? So earlier it was road that was bad, then it became metro that was bad, and now people in legally encroaching areas, which has made it bad. For some reason, I have no idea. Uh, whoever has built that road has chosen to divide the road into two levels. So there's a high level and there's a low level. Um, and then, you know, you miss it and you will be falling. So there is high risk of, uh, you know, uh, accident. And you just wonder that who was the person behind it who could, like, not even have such commonsensical thought. So you wonder that... Um, uh, who, who should you hold accountable for? So there is no one single uh, accountable resource around. So all these things, uh, very disappointingly mentioned that the response to my question that, you know, what is your uh, perception of the reputation of industry, good or bad? Sorry, good or poor? Response ranged from poor to very poor, right? So that's the challenge. Everybody thinks it is highly critical, but the reputation largely, of course, there were people who felt it is good, and I will talk about that aspect also uh, in a while, but largely people uh, felt that the reputation ranged from poor to very poor. And the reasons were given very clear, multiple stakeholders, so no clarity in account accountability. Uh, government's priorities uh, change uh, regularly, like you highlighted, Alok, with changing government, uh, you know, the whole plan undergoes a change. And of course, this indefinite length of any project, right? So you just don't know by the time a project is conceptualized and by the time it is implemented, it becomes obsolete and you know you really need uh, something more uh, so so you really don't really enjoy the fruits of uh, uh, that that um, infrastructure support that you've received
Um, having said that, um, my personal experience and all, you know, having traveled to various geographies across the world, I really believe our airports, ports, all these are fairly good. Uh, you know, uh, some of the infrastructure like in Bombay, Delhi, uh, airports are fairly capable, good uh, compared to many other airports worldwide. Uh, similarly, there are various other aspects. So, uh, one example of that would be, uh, you know, I, I just was reading and I figured that there is this concept for logistics performance indicator and highly important because uh, logistics is one area where, again, uh, infrastructure in the infrastructure space, it plays a highly critical role. You know, typically when you talk about infrastructure, all we can think of is construction. Uh, again, very, very important, but then there are so many more to it. Like, we are able to even exist and survive in a situation, absolutely unexpected situation like this of a uh, pandemic. Uh, because of the industry, right? Like if telecom industry hadn't really done what it has done, which is a critical part of infrastructure industry, um, I don't think, uh, you know, a basic survival was also possible. Forget doing these kind of conferences, right? <laughs> so, so, so definitely industry has done well, progressed well, and is, you know, has its own merits. Similarly, something like a logistics industry, which is catering to a small demand, like delivering matchbox to my house, to transporting big defense missiles across the world, right? So uh, definitely uh, critical. And I was reading the logistics uh, performance indicator uh, figure, which was given by World Bank, and India scores 44 on 167. The 167 countries were um, uh, studied, and India scores uh, 44, which is not bad, right? So, so definitely we're doing some great stuff, also. Definitely, uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> and not, not much is talked about that. Um, again, within that, so this logistics uh, performance indicator uh, was a combination of a couple of things, uh, like logistics, uh, customs uh, clearances, etc., infrastructure support, international shipment. Uh, tracing and tracking, which is, of course, a lot to do with IT, competence, and also timelines. You know, so all these factors, uh, despite all these factors, we've done fairly well. Um, important point uh, that I would like to highlight here is uh, uh, that what industry needs to really do is uh, talk about it. Because, uh, you know, we all have perceptions and uh, unfortunately episodes like um, ILNFS, etc. have deepened our negative perception. Um, important for the industry players and critical industry players like HCC, LNT, uh, Reliance, Adani, all these groups to come together and also, you know, do something for the industry come across with a positive perception because it influences our daily lives. And uh, if we are told that, uh, you know, this is how this industry is actually making our lives better, some things that we are taking for granted uh, will not be done. So, and I think uh, somewhere uh, the industry will also be able to generate that positive uh, uh, perception. Yeah, I think uh, what you said is very right. In fact, uh... Arun is here and maybe I can also take myself to be privileged that, you know, we have done certain part of infrastructure in a very remote part of country, uh, you know, on uh, projects of either our uh, companies or maybe supporting someone. And uh, like Leh Ladakh, today we had so much in the news today. But then, you know, today the main problem of uh, China is because their Indian roads have reached very near the border and that is a threat to their perception. So, sure. and uh, yeah, the railway to Jammu Kashmir, I think few of the companies, one of the company, Arun, was part of it. So, you know, which was very hard, difficult terrain, terrorism was at its peak, uh, but then, you know, the roads were built. So I agree with you. So another point which brings in is that when we talk about various uh, industry negativity, maybe the positivity is not really, I would say, uh, available as a library or archive or something for people to refer, you know, there are you know, there are a lot of folklores within the companies to talk about projects because the senior leaders will talk about what they have done earlier, but then there is no folklore available 
in real sense for public to know that you know how mumbai metro was difficult how bandra early how they have reached 70 meter below the sea how they have done is very I difficult for them to yeah can i fit in here can i fit in here yeah yeah, yeah, yeah please yeah, please yeah. in here for a minute just yeah, yeah. to support her views please. what she said just now then she can continue maybe you know, the issue with this particular industry has been like you said you know you cannot pinpoint and uh, apportion the blame as well as you know the credit credit yeah not able to do that but when it came to the airport you know she was immediately able to say that you know uh, i have you know uh, gone in these two airports and uh, i have i have got a fantastic experience but she is able to also probably say that because of whom it is. Yeah. And that is because, you know, from end to end, there has been only one agency. Correct. Okay. Yeah. But now, in the if you look at the history of the, you know, uh, in India, how the industry, infrastructure industry has developed, is that typically the owner is the government. You know the what construction industry and the infrastructure industry we are talking about 90 percent cases you know these big companies we are not the owners of it owners of the project okay True. so the owner is the one who has to project himself you know and uh, say right. come forward and you know either take the credit or take the blame one Number two, what happens is that when you construct a dam and when you're gone, your nameplate is not there. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> so, that we have built, you know, 65% of the nuclear power stations in this country. It's a matter of pride, but I have to tell you this, no? Correct. Or, you know, right. that more than 30-40% of the uh, hydro power has been constructed by, you know, uh, XYZ company or uh, you know my you know hcc or you know more than uh, 70 80 percent of you know uh, hydropower uh, in bhutan hcc is responsible for you know this but we are kind of conversation that so that happen. what i'm trying to say is that only after you know this development project started coming in the country or you know the construction cash contracts moved on to epc and contractors started assuming larger responsibility right from designing or engineering to the execution. Then there was a realization, and like like you said, that you also feel a part of the you know infrastructure industry because you are the user. So there has been a big debate in you know in different companies, especially in our company in HCC. And we used to say that who is your who is your actual user sure. or who is the client? The is stakeholder, in fact, the stakeholder for whom you are serving is your client. No, this is not your client. It's ultimately the user, and that's changed the perspective of the people, their behavior, how they deliver, and how it matters to the end user. Correct. Okay. For an end user that's, to appreciate that, that's this is, across industry, I would say, you know, like say for yeah. example, when I was a part of creating industry. Uh, my my customer was an issuer, right? But yes. my user was a banker and an investor. So it yes. is always, you know, your money is coming from A, but you're getting used by B. So Correct. who do you care to and who, whose interest do you look forward to? Like even in mutual fund industry, again, I spent considerably long amount of uh, time there. Um, mm. my, my user, again, my, my customer is the end investor. But I have to make sense to the distributors, the IFAs, who would then convince the end user to invest in my fund, right? So then, who is my customer again? So it, it definitely is always a problematic uh, situation. And here, I would also like to add one more point, uh, taking a cue from what you were mentioning, uh, Arun, that um, you know, typically what happens is when we are happy, we are happy. Okay, there's no problem. But when we are sad, we go ahead and write a complaint. We say manager ko bulao, hume feedback dena hai. You know, all those uh, things happen. Um, even in a simple thing like going to a restaurant eating. Uh, lovely food we enjoy. Very rarely do we go and say chef ko bulao, usko mujhe thank you bolna hai. Any of that doesn't happen unless, you know, it's some exotic uh, experience. 
but a little bad experience that i was asking for my glass of water to be filled and it took like 5 minutes for the waiting staff to do that we would say that service is so bad so uh, you know exactly that's what is happening i think with the industry also that there that's are not great things but we are not talking about them but whenever we are facing anything difficult or negative a lot gets talked about it like they say good news is no news bad news gets amplified right media also loves amplifying bad news hence i believe for the industry players and also for government or maybe a need for having an industry body who would speak on behalf of the industry uh um, to to talk about these great things and uh, highlight those things that was this was otherwise like our parents tell us that you know don't feel entitled i have given you something and that's when it strikes that okay yeah as in you know there are children who are on street also but it is my parent who has done this for me or or i tell my children that i started flying only after i started earning and you are born possibly the next day you've started flying and you say like the minute we enter the aircraft he will say why are we going right we should be going left right so because they will think that oh first class is my right so you know because they are born with that kind of privilege that they think it is given so unless we don't flag it off to them that you know this is something you are you privileged to doesn't happen so i think one uh, important recommendation that i would have for the industry is talk about the great things uh, nobody would do that for you uh, you have to do it and once you do exactly. that i think a lot of perception issue will get uh, wiped out mm. correct mitu one uh, quick question uh, before we go to amit uh, you know you have been uh, with different industries and you have also been uh, playing a role on the board uh, because of corporate governance requirement now with whatever research you have done or whatever discussions uh, we have done uh, during the panel now do you suggest something particular based on the perception what has traveled that you know what could be the area of corporate governance maybe where you know two things one is the image second is also the employee confidence you know which travels together and also the perception goes to the public because in board meetings we talk about also public what they think about us so can right. you just throw some light yeah no corporate governance itself i think uh, is a big parameter right so institutes like uh, iias uh, and there are many other corporate governance uh, bodies like that i think there's something called gov uh, gaviva um so uh, they are uh, doing uh, studies on corporate governance and uh, but basic parameters like for instance uh, make things clear no like the annual reports possibly could have a dedicated section like every annual report has a dedicated dedicated section on uh, corporate governance but it's all gyan and you know content who nobody reads um tabular clear in you know accountable way in which these are the parameters on which i am evaluating an organization on corporate governance and this is where we are simple things like uh, time taken to complete a project simple things like possibly uh, negative media visibility that one is getting social listening that's coming in there's so many parameters that can be considered and uh, a certain score could be given and uh, that itself uh, will be of quite help like for example uh, you know like one of the insurance companies uh, i'm on board of and uh, we keep talking about this that the minute lic comes in every other insurance agency insurance company becomes irrelevant right so in that how do you stand out um, corporate governance or governance practices per se is anyway one of the areas where people have doubts when it comes to large entities so that's one area where one could focus talk about and uh, take it forward another one like uh, you talked about employee sensitivity um, i work with one of the maharatnas and uh, there we are doing fantastic act, uh, you know uh, we, we are leveraging employees to tell the story uh so simple thing like how a uh, uh, gas cylinder delivery is happening in times like these people are taking it for granted that are there are 
सिलेंडर गैस खत्म हो गया आई विल कॉल अप माई सर्विस प्रोवाइडर एंड गैस विल बी डिलीवर्ड बट हाउ इज दैट सर्विस प्रोवाइडर इंश्योरिंग दैट दैट्स हैपनिंग इन सच डेज एंड टाइम्स इज कमेंडेबल and when we highlighted this to our client they were like yeah as in it makes a great story and then they started doing something called corona warriors where they are actually uh, you know talking about things like how um, their guys are delivering cylinders home to home or how their uh, petrol pump is becoming a uh, rest station for migrant workers so whatever is the topical topic pick that up talk about it and your employees also feel that yes their work is getting recognized talked about they feel more connected uh, this because this industry is so much like an ocean you can't figure out who is responsible for what so giving Correct. some responsibility definitely goes a long way very well said yeah i think naga you have to have some point yeah 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 on the corporate governance if we break it down corporate governance is a cost usually companies uh, try to reduce that cost and try to optimize the profit but in reality what happens if your corporate governance is high even the profitability is marginally low the market values that transparency the high standards of governance at a much higher multiple than actually you are earning profit a little more so we are ourselves supplied that principle to us wherein usually in the education sector um exits are very unlikely and un, uh, unimaginable so here we are we have not only exited 100% and nice. on the day on the day of transaction was my last working day for the organization the incumbents felt they can run the organization without me even for a day out there that is the so when corporate governance so how much it it is valued in real time correct correct i think very well said it's a very good point yeah i think mithu great uh, insights and uh, you know the i think the player what was needed for this you really brought that in that you know we should pride our work and maybe you know don't be shy guys come out and speak about yourself so this i think is a good point and this is where we also see that a person waiting in the wings amit i think has something to say first about the points what we discuss and then maybe he has his own uh, insights yeah amit come on board great thanks alok uh talking after mithu is almost like you know coming after rohit sharma who made a century win <laughs> <laughs> this always happened by the way in our iod forums i have seen her twice or thrice and then you know she takes 5 minutes and put four five points and rest people are bold after 20 minutes 25 minutes so i think you have a task in hand you rightly said start great Virat great Kohli. points you know yeah great great points made by all of you and i was actually interestingly taking notes about an industry which i feel akin to god so <laughs> i am saying that you know infrastructure is something that more you guys have given to this nation the uh, people started more and more and uh, i feel it very closely to my heart because you know i started from a very small town near jamshedpur not even uh, not even 100000 population was there and it used to take huge effort for covering 60 kilometers road distance to jamshedpur and to catch a train for calcutta we will actually start one day in advance now, certain eyebrows are certain eyebrows are already raised because there are more people from that part of the area but i will not divulge <laughs> <laughs> so, so from there coming to a situation where you know uh, uh, we we often talk about how bad mumbai road conditions are other day i i actually started from uh, one of uh, the hotels of bandra you know trident to be precise we are starting from pune and we 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 had a colleague from us along and you know people from us always think that india has got bad roads and all thanks to my bright driver he sent something and he took a shortcut and a new direct road to where where, where you actually cross sai and chembur and everything and bang on you are on pune highway and yeah. this colleague of mine <laughs> <laughs> was like he was that that oh my god mumbai has got this much of infrastructure and you know i was really uh, 
feeling that pride in india and uh, the sector and and everything else coming back to alok the the topic that you have given on challenges on infrastructure and uh, also the risk i think uh, let me start with the challenges first and possibly then we talk about the risk and all uh somehow being in sales for more than two decades you know i am an incorrigible optimist and uh, post covid <laughs> if i have to put in my hundred dollar into any sector i'll put it in, in in infrastructure and why i'm saying that is typically if you see how all the nations have reacted you know on the economical side on the larger economical issue they have either gone on the supply side or they have gone on the demand side right on on demand side means you you give money to people so typically if you talk about us they they had given a lot of money to people so that you know the consumption start and people start purchasing and unemployment allowance was given to the extent of i believe 600 dollars something like that huge money now india cannot afford to do that so they have Correct. they have gone on the other side and which is the demand side and i still recall the day uh, uh, you know our finance minister actually announced the uh, stimulus package there were both positives and negatives but one gentleman who really struck a chord with me is uh, uh, is our own mumbai car and uh, me to you stay in pawai is is uh, mr hira nandani and uh, you know he was talking about he was talking about something very basic that in a country like india no matter what you want to do you have to start with infrastructure unless and until you have great roads today you spoke about you know the gas cylinders getting delivered naga took the migrants through buses to you know different parts of the country and and it's it's all because of the good work that people like arun and alok have done over the years which has got neglected and nobody spoke about it i think that's where the the positivity comes in my mind is that if you see obviously uh, you know every every nation will look at a supply chain kind of a situation now and uh, you know for whatever reason that we all know china was the center of uh, uh, the supply chain you know heart whatever you say whatever you call it you know the main epicenter of supply chain management was there in china now people would like to de-risk it and if in this de-risking if any country has got the maximum possibility to actually give a fair bit of competition to china the same need it's our own country right india because a we got the space we got the skilled manpower we got sufficient amount of consumption market and most and most importantly is that you know thanks to the software uh, you know developments now the apis are all over right you right. think of anything and there's an api you know uh, integration which is available so it's a great time and i personally believe that uh, you know though, though though most of my friends keep keep talking from the consulting background that you know you you don't really put your dough on infrastructure but if this country has to come back we have to put our money on infrastructure and which is what the government used to uh, they 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 at least started with that i am not saying that it's foolproof at this point of a time they started with that i actually picked up something very interesting from arun's comment is that arun uh, you mentioned that almost without realizing sometimes companies become very big because of the nature of the sector and yeah. and there lies the challenge and the beauty and naga spoke about upskilling also now if you actually you know if you combine both of them together what happens is a 100 crore company suddenly gets into a 10000 crore kind of a situation in two year situation do you have the fungibility to operate in that kind of a situation sure. so possibly the opportunity lies today that world is becoming small so can we get into alliances and one one area where i believe that even when uh, alok this morning i was talking to our infrastructure one of the partners you know who is mm -hmm. who is very mm -hmm. very active in infrastructure sector so i was taking some of the inputs that uh, who, is, who, is, who is listening to you and me here <laughs> <laughs> so he said one of the biggest you know opportunity that you see in the in in the entire sector uh, you know uh, whether it is manufacturing and whether it is infrastructure is applicable which which is not really as improved as in our uh, in the other countries that you have seen developed countries is the 
matter of alliances and it's like rather than competing with each other you know can you make alliances and can you actually share best of both the worlds now in our mm-hmm. country you know given the nature and we we discuss the political situations where projects get delayed payment get delayed and you know the cash flow within inverted comma you know gets disturbed and all of that <laughs> if it happens sure. at least you are dearest up to some extent you know and 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 i believe that every black swan event uh, i think naga spoke about a black swan event i i indeed agree on that every black swan event you actually get uh, also pushed towards lot of innovation lot of new uh, risk that you would not take otherwise uh i hail from a sector which is insurance you know and in insurance in sales uh, uh, mithu you would know that every quarter something that happens is review okay sales review ek, ek target ban jata hai and you are black or white as per your target achievement theek hai duniya idhar ka udhar ho jaye you have to achieve your target and from my almost like you know childhood in my professional life i have achieved my targets or missed my targets so that's 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 the only review that we had possibly now with this time set we have to encourage people to fail and experiment with something i think know, very well and, said and and, <clears throat> and 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 even in infra sector if you can encourage people to fail and if the government gives the support if the if 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 general people as a whole give the support and encourage people to learn out of failures we might emerge as a new country altogether i will yeah. caution you here that you are asking for trouble being in insurance because you know people will fail at your cost also <laughs> <laughs> i i think i think actually you know uh, this is uh, this is one area where i i will like to take the name of a country uh, which is uh, which is not really mentioned for always uh, great things but if you look at thailand in the in the in the in the amount of uh, you know providing uh, manufacturer support to everything their infra played a big big role and almost silently and they competed to the likes of singapore and south korea It was not easy for them but they could do that and they could get into big time of exports if you if you look at that you know possibly last 10 years whatever whatever activity we have done on the infra side uh, i would not say it has it has not been enough it has been enough because we needed that kind of basic infra also but we should we should possibly get a little more micro and i am sure you know alok arun you guys are uh, you know experts from the sector you will you will speak much more on this but rather than you know providing similar kind of opportunity or focus or money towards everything can we decide on two three micro Uh, things on which the country can actually gallop because this is also one sector which provides employment across you know all strata now be it blue colored be it white colored i think the amount of jobs that got created in india last 15 20 yeah. years yeah nobody talks about that uh i think And now what are the then, yeah sure please no i'm just Be- both skilled and unskilled both both Correct. kind of employment yes yes and uh, actually that's where naga was talking you know about upskilling i think the greatest opportunity that education can provide to this industry is in terms of how can you drive your unskilled to skilled you know that's possibly the idea and i don't know arun whether this is possible i don't know alok whether this is possible but do you get into a situation where the profit of the entire project can get shared with the people who had made the project successful or unsuccessful whatever it is i mean those are the you know opportunities that I, as a consultant it comes to my mind and i will just touch on one major area where i see that you know how the covid or whatever you know black swan event change that we are witnessing now how do you look at your uh, chief risk officer you know i think no. gone are the days where chief risk officer would be somebody who is a is a neglected guy you know he is he is not he is never a amitabh bachchan of the world like the amitabh bachchan or dharmendra of the world will be the 
CTO or the sales head or someone like that. You know, he, he, he is always like uh, AK Hangal of Shole picture. Yeah, <laughs> hey, <bang on. laughs> I, I was actually searching for a good name, <laughs> but but suddenly you will see that AK Hangal transferring into Varun Dhawan now. <laughs> and and uh, dancing with the best of the staves because I I believe uh, on a serious note this is this is an opportunity that if you can manage your risk properly if you can give a risk matrix to each and every employee instead of measuring them on sales target achievement if you can identify those risk metrics and if you can measure them in terms of how much profit or loss or impact or customer expectation are they achieving out of his or her action i think the industry will change forever so i'll stop here i know that i have made a lot of controversial comments no 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 i think you have made right comments <laughs> and uh, I I don't know, uh, to a lighter side i wanted yeah. to take it lighter side there is a joke going on in the industry that you know when you talk about risk all right i mean you start apportioning the risk and start costing it and then uh, you know make a tender you'll never get the tender <laughs> you commit a mistake, you will get it. <laughs> and that gives another point whether we should have really that system in the country <laughs> by the government on L1 basis, or uh, you must all you can also give some uh, marks to your uh, other credentials, you know, like your uh, uh, delivery performance and the quality right. performance and so on. <laughs> I think the uh, other. Yeah, yeah, just one second. The other part of yeah. one point before I forget that is that, you know, for infrastructure, since the time that at least I was born, we have been looking up to government, you know, to develop infrastructure every time. And I heard Mitu mentioning about Sakinaka. Now, in some of the countries, you know, infrastructure have actually developed because of community, you know, initiatives. And uh, possibly, you know, I, I, I am very bullish about the new, you know, Gen Z. Possibly that Gen Z will bring on a new infrastructure investment altogether, and you will see more and more of crowdfunding into infrastructure. Nobody has tried it alone. We should initiate that. No, yeah, I think fact, let's see that. To add to that, like currently we are uh, doing a pro bono research uh, on uh, general insurance industry, coincidentally. And one thing that has come out when we are talking to all these um, both insurers as well as uh, insurance broking houses. Uh, that new concepts around business interruption policies are being, uh, you know, um, talked about, and new policies around that uh, possibly will be taking shape. Now that's something very interesting. And the point that you mentioned that let people fail, right? So, you know, Gen Z, let people fail and have policies around business interruptions. I think a good combination of something like this. Um, Topped with right technology and uh, skilled labor, or rather labor, because uh, you know we have abundance of it. So, uh, skilled and skilled uh, both. Um, I think will all go well for the industry. Maybe at a smaller scale, but worth trying. But what is happening in the industry, if I can, you know, uh, talk on behalf of industry, is that you know people are talking about you know a lot of development programs for the contractors and so on. You know, and that is where you know larger industry players they have always encouraged you know the smaller players to come in and work, and their larger players they have taken risk. Let them fail. I will support him. And Alok uh, knows that. You know, so bigger companies they have tried this particular model a lot. There is a reason why it is not coming to retail. You know, and I think there is a fundamental reason where. People no, like then, Naga can actually uh, help a lot. Today, the, uh, today the yeah. infrastructure jobs are awarded by the government. So they go, they will go by their own uh, system of tendering where they will pre-qualify somebody. And only if you are pre-qualified, then only you know you are allowed to bid. So that, so, is, what that is where I am saying two things now. A mm -hmm. is alliances, where actually, you know, gone are the days of you know of getting our tender floated and picked up by a big one to a, to a very different, which we in insurance used to say, you know, co-sharing of risk kind of a situation. That's what, mm -hmm. that's where alliances well, uh, make, one, uh, but, but I, in, yeah. just, just one second, hello. Yeah, yeah. The, yes. the, 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 the reason, you know, this industry could not 
possibly also make a uh, different step altogether, unlike a space technology or medical science or things like that. None of us in this in this panel would actually say with a pride to your son or daughter that you know you grew up and become a civil contractor. Okay, because of the challenges, uncertainty, and everything. You'd rather say that you go and become a doctor. No one knows that even after 10 years, poor guy has to possibly go to a village and fight out in a you know small health center. But none of us told our children to become a civil contractor, encouraged to become an entrepreneur right from the age of 25. I think that Correct. needs to be. No, I think encouragement to the entrepreneurship, uh, probably with startup, things are slowly uh, coming up definitely. Uh, but then I, I was to ask you one question before Kusum ask you some question uh, to all. Uh, you know, the VUCA world has already put insurance. Uh, I, I'm coming to your reluctant uh, side of business again, uh, Amit. The VUCA world was so much talked about earlier, and you know, the insurance company already is, you know, finding out strategies how to tackle. Now there are 100 or I don't know, giga number of VUCA suddenly thrown up by COVID. So what, how you see insurance uh, itself is facing challenge, number one, and then insurance companies should upgrade to something uh, on insurances and this 100 giga book of world or something like scenario. I think, I think nothing like this would have helped the insurance company uh, better than having a COVID, you know, because in, in a country like India, particularly, let, let me first talk about our country, you know, I know that, uh, you know, if my wife is doing a karva, karva choth or, you know, my mother is blessing me, my father is blessing me, anything can happen to my neighbors, not to me, right? We are fatalistic <laughs> countries. So nobody, <laughs> nobody believed that insurance is required. And I have seen very, very educated people forget about life insurance, even about medical health coverage. They will say, Ar, employer your premiums will become two and a half times nobody would listen to me now suddenly you know insurance companies have and, and insurance people you know agents have become like sanitizers now okay you will start loving them <laughs> and you will welcome them actually you know for understanding insurance so i think on a, on a on a serious note i think the awareness level has increased like anything for the insurance companies so that will get lot of new set of customers but insurance companies have to change a lot and they Correct. are they are the paradigm shift has to happen you know uh, because insurance companies are like like i said you know sales driven number driven you know customer comes last actually insurance company used to get driven by the distribution the large distribution margin so kaise bhi ho to typically uh, you know I, i'm sorry for this word but chipka do you know hmm. that that used to be the, the the policy has to be chipka not not about the customer benefit and all of that right now now that that has to change you know typically in a situation like this thanks to covid health awareness and the understanding of risk will go up by many notches and insurance company product process the way you service your customer has to change now, yes. are they ready, you know, for that paradigm shift, quote unquote, uh, of course, people will get ready, but there'll be struggle. The I other big positive for them is that for the first time, people have started entertaining insurance agents digitally. You know, this has never happened in our country, when 95% of the sales used to happen face to face. Now, I've been talking to my friends from the industry, they are saying that the happy news is, People are selling over WhatsApp. Now that's a very, uh, you know, great situation for a country like ours. We have 2 million so, agents. So like uh, Mitu said, that companies have to come out and change their brand. Maybe insurance agents, they are, you know, have to also change their brand of reaching out to people because online, yes, they need not to see them. So, you know, on the lighter side, I'm saying that. So maybe, yes, I think insurance in that segment, maybe digital has become more acceptable. And uh, probably, you know, we are also, people who want less burden so you know if you say push this button push this button then we are easy but if you talk to me about the risk i will say so i think there's another mindset which are working but every good thing thing has to come to an end and this also we are running out towards that uh, closure but then there are certain questions i think Kusum, we have some questions if we brief them up and ask uh, whomever people have asked questions so this is the question for the 
I think your voice, uh, your, your voice, uh, I think. Uh, you have to moderate the questions. You will have to tell. We are not able to hear. I think you'll not, you, you'll take the question and then repeat probably. Okay. So I think, I think the, basically the question, what was there was, uh, I think with Amit, uh, how the risk management could be done in portfolio management of any company, because all the projects are diverse or different and how the risk could be apportioned or what like it should say, be assessed. Yeah. So let me take the second part of the question first. Okay. I, I, I think, uh, the emerging risk is going to be very di very different you know uh, and and gone are the days that when uh, for any project you i i i presume alok this is around project uh, risk that we yeah. are talking this is, this is this infra companies question somebody has asked yeah, so, so, i will also so, respond after he after yeah, he yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah i think gone are the days where you can take you know one particular big project insurance and forget about it and uh, you know you think that your risk is actually properly assessed because of that which is why i was saying that even even in the infra company kind of a situation in the smallest of the entities you need to have risk officer where it the risk needs to be assessed on a dynamic basis you cannot forget about it you cannot forget the smallest of the situation that possibly if your 10 people are leaving or not reporting to the duty there could be a project delay because the resources are scarce and your time limit has to be honored. So your monitoring of the risk will actually be the solution to management of the risk. So I think in today's world, a lot of technical solutions are available for that. You might resort to that. Okay. Yeah. Arun, you want yeah, to Arun. add something? Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. Uh, what was the question? Uh, can you repeat, Alok? What, was the, what did he say about portfolio? I think the portfolio is of different projects together. So how do oh, yes. we assess this risk and how do we manage? Yeah. In fact, in, in fact, actually, uh, you know, the better practice for a construction uh, company or an infra company which is managing different uh, projects, there are multiple projects. Okay, so uh, you know, you do the risk assessment at a project level right from its acquisition to you know delivery stage. That is one, and you know, like uh, uh, Amit said. Uh, you know, you do it on an ongoing basis and, you know, there is a review and quarterly review and so on. And then you roll it up to the, uh, you know, uh, business enterprise level as well. But what, what at a, when, when you are, re, you know, reviewing this at a little higher level as a strategy, you also need to understand how you develop your portfolio. And now this portfolio word, when, you, when it comes, it is people are familiar when, you know, financial matters are being discussed and somebody tells you how to, <laughs> where to put your money on Correct. which part and all that. But for a projects also or bouquet of projects, you know, when you uh, look at it as a, you know, a portfolio, you know, you need to develop different criteria for yourself. One could be, you know, like sector in which sector you want to play. How much of you know percentage you would you know put in one particular sector, for example, roads or hydro or any other you know different kinds of sectors you can say building sector. How much will you take? How much you know uh, you know geography wise you will go? So that is another way of doing it. How much how much business will you you know client wise? How much Correct. business will you give to the uh, take from a central government? How much business will you take from state government? How much business will you take from public versus private? So there are various ways of doing it. And the Correct. business which you are or the, the way you are doing it, I think you need to develop, you know, these kind of questions for yourself. Correct. And then you qualify your portfolio uh, against that. And then you need to also, you know, assign certain percentiles depending upon your experience. Go on reviewing it and then change it. Because some, you know, you have taken risk because the market was booming in, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gulf and you have gone there. But how much of percentage business you should come from, you know, that particular uh, sector, uh, uh, you know, geography that you need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, review yourself and decide. Correct. Correct. So, Kusum, you have some more questions. Can 
just uh, I think uh, uh, loud loud uh, we are ending the session and it was a very positive session. Are you able to hear every one of you? Yeah, no, I, I could know. I think oh. you take the question and repeat it. That will be better. Okay, I so you can have it. Then. Okay, I, I think uh, basically there were a few questions on uh, areas like maybe coordination, how it could be improved. Maybe Naga, if you have something on coordination because you are from different industry and you also, uh, Mr. Naga. Yeah. Uh, about the coordination issues like infrastructure suffers because of multiple agencies like Mitu said too many agencies maybe uh, you know what as an outsider what you will suggest that how it could be improved as coordination um, coordination is uh, uh, it boils down to the arc structure be it is within the organization uh, different departments no, or, about between uh, the stake stakeholders very stakeholders like because one infra means almost 15 government departments and few other stakeholders so huge yeah 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 so uh, what my point here is uh, be it inside the organization or be it outside the organization uh, the integrity of the organization see the, how how transparent the policies are and the delegation happens is what uh, matters many a times uh, how, how effective people can be uh, uh, the, otherwise what happens for everything the ceo or uh, the uh, promoter owner has to step into the role uh, he himself becomes a bottleneck so most times uh, you see uh, the, with external stakeholders uh, never uh, a government officer or a kind of uh, a public uh, policy organization can be working for you there, there is so much uh, constraints uh, do come from outside uh, uh, so uh, the moment uh, the person in charge is fully empowered uh, to take decisions on the ground many a times uh, uh, the issues are uh, much more uh, uh, easy to execute than uh, uh, if he is just uh, need to go and consult uh, the boss constantly. Yeah, yeah. Mitu, one question for you. Uh, like you consult uh, on reputation management. So like you do it with the FMCG retail or others. How infra would be different for you if you have to give reputation management consulting? In fact, uh... It'll be very easy because like I said, there are so many people's stories um, that we, uh, see for any uh, perception to get managed, the stakeholders have to connect with the, uh, with the attempt for the management of that particular reputation. And uh, it's very easy for the stakeholders to connect with, uh, you know, messages around infrastructure industry because we use it on a day-to-day -day basis right so uh yeah first yeah. and foremost thing that i would love to do is uh, use stories uh to connect uh, and and you know talk about like for example like arunji was telling about hcc and it has done so many wonderful uh, initiatives for the country um if i were to work on say for example hcc um, I would use those nuggets and show the kind of impact on a day-to-day -day basis are we making and hence how are we changing your lives. Um, the challenge uh, that I see with most of these large-scale companies uh, that they're doing is they call one politician that uh, today, say, XYZ minister is doing ribbon cutting of this outlet or is inaugurating that bridge or that dam. Like, what do I do? Like, what is in it for me if, say, a certain minister has inaugurated a certain dam? But if you tell me that this dam is going to change my life in a, this, this particular manner, I would be connected with that. <laughs> Very true. I would believe you more. So, uh, simple thing, use stories. Uh, you know, of course, there are many more ideas, but, uh, you know, in the interest of time, the most easy, uh, the lowest hanging fruit, I would say, I would love to pluck is pick up these nuggets uh, from the company, create stories around it, and tell the world. I think dynamic dashboard is another thing that uh, we should have in infrastructure because uh, 
this is one sector where the sharing of information is one of the lowest about the stage of yeah. what is the travel i'm sure a lot of internal stories but externally you know even if you purchase a house how much information that you keep getting from the builder <laughs> you know you kind of go and uh, look at the structure and anticipate it na floor ban gaya hai so i i think uh, dynamic dashboard is another thing which will go a long way in building reputation yeah i basically killing that information asymmetry that exists and uh, you know uh, and ideas like dynamic uh, dashboard is another brilliant one uh, and easy to implement that's also important so it it was a very nice and positive session thank you all the panelists and i would like to request all of you to please come up with at least one suggestion uh, to support our agenda which is uh, like as we are talking about all the challenges and this covid 19 is a challenge to survive being fittest and agile is the key so we are looking forward to have some suggestion from you for the for the young generation as you can see there are lot of suicides which is really shocking for people like us and various others because people are really not able to take this thing positively it's very difficult to uh, be in this kind of a situation we have never been into lockdown like this you guys are uh, experts can face things as you have already uh, you know faced a lot of things and you are good at it so we would request to have some suggestions which can help others and people who are working who are employees who can face it in a better way in a positive way so looking forward to it please sure 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 thank you so much yeah uh, yeah uh uh so as an entrepreneur i can uh, say um there will be current crisis and everybody must be going uh, through uh, the worst crisis ever in their life but the only way to overcome the current crisis is look beyond the crisis and uh, uh, hook your vision to the opportunity beyond the crisis that's what uh, helps you to cross the crisis um, situation i think if people uh, if people had seen the earlier slides that alok flashed you know the numbers and then the uh, the importance that the government is giving for this particular uh, industry the sector as such and then the money that is being committed you know for this particular sector if you look at all those numbers you know the entire world is actually looking at india as a you know place to you know come and work it's not just you know within india because if you look at you know globally elsewhere how many countries are really you know growing their infrastructure how many countries are able to commit these kind of numbers you know uh, you know for their infrastructure probably the, only india is the place where you know it is going at the pace in which you know we are really watching it today this is a great place to be in and like amit said if he has to pay, put 100 dollars he would put on infrastructure sector that is very true it's very true correct and the covid situation is a short term situation and you have to look and take a view with longer term and uh, in a long term india story growth story is there it's not going to vanish and you just cannot uh, you know stop it whatever happens you will have to commit this government that government whatever whichever things happen you will have to keep spending money on infrastructure today in uh, you know in the country for next yeah. at least 10 years so this yeah, is well a, there are lots of opportunities there are lots of gaps in yeah. terms of resources skill set people equipment materials whatever it is because you know all of would know when there are a huge number of projects you know in a particular locality you don't get anything neither people nor equipment nor material so whatever area you are associated in with this particular industry in any kind of supply chain whether it is people whether it is material whether it is equipment whether it is contracting site or whatever it is there is a huge opportunity huge opportunity so whether you are consultant 
or whether you are an executioner. I mean, it doesn't matter or which sector are you. So it's a huge opportunity. So it's a, a very nice place to be in, and the time also is right. I would say. And a lot. I mean, not just uh, forget this three four months, but in general, I'm saying the when I'm saying time, we take a bit longer perspective. Sure. Uh, what I believe is um, COVID actually, in my mind, uh, of course, there's a pandemic and it is causing health havoc. Uh, goes without saying, um, one of the unfortunate situations. However, uh, as they say, adversity also brings in a lot of opportunity. And uh, experiencing uh, this pandemic-like situation uh, currently, I believe um, I have really seen this statement come true. So uh, fortunately or unfortunately, but the healthcare infrastructure that our country was struggling with uh, became like obviously very, very evident also that it was not up to the mark. But then it has also created uh, a lot of innovation a lot of collaboration and uh, that has resulted in a lot of positive outcome as well so um, i would say that uh, you know again whether you are on the operation side or on the consultancy side or on the employment side um, learn to collaborate be open for innovations and very important communicate the more you would communicate whether in your personal life or in your professional life uh, it will be easier for people to understand uh, your accomplishments and your challenges and then the support and acceptance uh, whether it is an industry or an individual will be way higher great that's great let me Can share one it? secret here yeah yes uh, in the consulting fraternity the kind of uh, projects and the kind of us that we are getting on the supply chain side i i don't think i have seen ever no that Precisely. kind of history uh and uh, on the supply chain and uh, if if the story goes like this uh i think trust me that in india you would see five times of the money coming to supply chain and obviously that has to come to infrastructure in some way or other uh, then you would have seen in last 10 years. Next two years could be quite a very different story for the sector. The There will be major skill gaps, that's what I see. There will be major org gap that I see. And those are the opportunities for every youngster to look at. I think uh, possibly the best time for budding civil engineers also. And uh, you know that earlier people used to send their people for computer science in every engineering colleges might be three years down the line you will see the same cure towards civil engineering and uh, you know i keep my fingers crossed for that i think uh, what kusum has asked you all i'm also encouraged to add my own one line you know i think uh, message to both entrepreneur uh, that uh, you know when you talk about agility agility is basically not only movement but also getting prepared for better movement with a lot right. of developments. So I think that is the key for you. So learn uh, from good practices, try and adopt, cut your cost. Employee is not the only cost, but a number of things which you can cut down. To the employees, not only civil, but any engineering or any management or any fraternity. Uh, I think uh, today's scenario is show your uh, determination to do better. I think that is one area which is probably lacking today somewhere pre-COVID. And uh, like Kusum talked about the stress, it is fully understandable that you know stress is high today on the not only young people but everyone. But one way of doing that is uh, prepare yourself better and gear up. And uh, that was a great uh, opportunity for them to grow, as you rightly said. You all rightly said, yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for Very uh, much. All Thank positive you. words. Uh, I have Bye. I have a few lines to share with you all so that we can just end it on a positive note. Kyu dare ki zindagi mein kya hoga? Har vakt kyu soche ki bura hoga? Badte rahe bas manzilon ki or hume kuch mile na mile ta zurba to naya hoga. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. Bingo.
Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot to you all for coming. And thanks, thanks. to audience for thank staying you. with patients and raising questions. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All thanks. the best. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. I'm going to show you one look at it. Close the webinar.
अरे धीरज को Am I audible? Yeah. yeah. Am I audible? Acha. And and the picture is also clear. Not that. It's thoda blurry, but okay. Yeah. Blur hai na thoda. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's fine. ठीक है. ठीक है और कोई मत बोलना. अपना कैमरा कैमरा नहीं वो. अपना माइक बंद कर लो. And let's start. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Kusum Dixit. Welcome you all on behalf of CI Global Venture LLP. Our agenda for today is COVID-19: A challenge to survive, being fittest and agile is the key. We will discuss infrastructure, management challenges, and risk post COVID-19. We are CI Global Venture LLP. We believe in real, valuable, and sustainable solutions. We provide. global management consulting and financial come infra solutions we indulge in business transformation restructuring diversification cost optimization and risk profiling along with this we take up pnc tev le and li roles also we have uploaded our corporate profile for more details kindly go through it's on our it's on your screen We have discussed in our last webinar after a period of struggle we always come out stronger. We acknowledged the fact that it's difficult to adopt technology everywhere in infrastructure. Being highly populated country we have to see employment generation also. Our industry employ a large chunk of manual labor. even our government is trying its level best to help out every sector they have come with they have come up with various packages to reduce the burden and stress on the industries and people as government cannot help each and every one we have to help ourselves people are undergoing stress depression due to job losses having no money future anxiety hunger etc Recently we have seen there are so many suicides people are committing which is a highly depressing fact we talked about making warriors out of entrepreneurs during covid-19 as they are strong enough can take up bigger risks can face challenges better and can motivate others to be positive but as a normal person who is trying and struggling every day it's important to keep in mind being fitter and agile is the key to survive we know it's difficult that's why we have gathered here to discuss few mantras to survive in the best possible way from the industry experts uh on our panel today who are contributing in their own special way to help people let's welcome mr sanjay dat Managing Director and CEO, Tata Realty and Infrastructure Limited, and Tata Housing Development Company Limited. 
Managing Director and CEO at Tata Reality and Infrastructure Limited and Tata Housing Development Company Limited. He has over 27 years of experience in the real estate sector. In the past, he was the founding member of CBRE and served as the CEO of Cushman Wakefield, JLL and Capital Land India. He has a postgraduate degree in marketing and HR from the International Management Institute. He is the co-chairman of PICI Real Estate Committee. He is also the chairman of Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors, Southeast Asia. He is the co-chair of Ease of Doing Business, a chair. In addition to this, he is the advisory council member of GRE, GBCI, and a member of Cornet Global. Our next panelist is Mr. Naga Prasad Tamala, Chairman, People Combined Initiatives. Chairman and co-founder of the People Combined Group, which was known as Vikas Education Institutes earlier, be it the Oak Ridge International School, which is Andhra Pradesh's first IB World School in Hyderabad in 2001, the Westbury in 2010, or OI, a play school chain in 2011. His sharp business strategies coupled with the vast experience of the education world has helped the organization roar higher with every new venture. In the recent past, People Combined has won many accolades, such as the great place to work for many consecutive years and the best company to, for women to work in India, Mr. Naga Prasad Tamala is, the, is a mathematician and has an MBA in Business Administration and Management from ISB Hyderabad. He won the title of Game Changer of AP by Times of India and the title Business Wizard of AP by India Today in the year 2010. Our next panelist is Mr. Arun Karam Belkar, Board Member Capacit Infra Projects Limited, Ex-President and CEO HCC. Independent Director of Capacit Infra Projects Limited, he has done his BE in Mechanical Engineering from the University of Mumbai and was a silver medalist. He has also done MBA in Materials Management from Pune University with top rank. During his tenure at HCC Limited for 26 years, he looked over the business growth through strategic initiatives of various departments and served as a director on board of Numerous HCC group companies, he was instrumental in introducing e-procurement at HCC and under his leadership, HCC was awarded SAP's the best innovation award for creative use of their material management module. He has also mentored uh, at Hybar Technologies, which is involved in SAP implementation in the EPC sector. In addition to this work in the construction sector, he has set up a world-class vineyard and winery. He has also overseen the aviation department and operation. Our next panelist is Ms. Meetu Samal, founder, eminence, independence director, Times Group Companies. Meetu Samal has over two decades of experience in brand positioning and reputation management. She is the founder of Eminence, which is a reputation consulting firm which helps companies and individuals in enhancing their respective brand experience and building credible reputation. She also serves as an independent director on the boards of the Times Group companies, namely Zoom, Entertainment Network, Times Guarantee Limited, and Aegon Rev Life Insurance Company Limited. She has also worked with Crystal, Aditya Birla Capital, ICICI Prudential, etc. She has done MA in economics from the University of Mumbai and MBA from SP Jain Institute of Management and Research. Our next panelist is Mr. Amit Roy, Director Insurance PwC. Director at PwC India, he has completed his executive education from Northwestern University, Kalau, School of Management, University of Pennsylvania, the Wharton School. He has also done his PGP Max in business administration and management from ISB. He is a business leader with 26 years of in-depth experience across distribution management, customer relationship management, turnaround of business and establishing new business models across geographies. He has managed large profit centers and SOBs across various business lines. He has been responsible for developing strategic plans for business growth market expansion product development and launches. He has led large teams of diverse 
employees and also has a proven track record in building franchises. Thank you. And Mr. Uh, Alok Sapre, he's a chairman and MD, CIA Global Venture LLP. He is the moderator for the session. Mr. Alok Sapre, he is a business strategist and management expert with sector agnostic exposure to project and risk management of more than 30 years in various nuances of Indian and global infrastructure, construction and management industry. He is also an expert in advising right selection and setting up of businesses commercial acumen, risk study, and in inducting best global practices with ethics and transparency in PPP, public EBC, EPC businesses within infrastructure. He holds MBA from ISB, Wharton, Kellogg, FDC Brazil in finance, economics, business management, and leadership with masters in hydroelectrical. Welcome you, sir. Please take the session from here. Thank you. <laughs> 